Chimere is a distant planet. It is defined by waves of life brought from Earth and set free to evolve independently in this new context. The indigenous life of the planet, swarms of microbes called magic by the people who live there, are what harvest Earth organisms and make copies on Chimere. As the asteroid which concluded the Mesozoic never struck Chimere, dinosaurs remain the dominant terrestrial megafauna. Cryptids are animals that some people believe may exist but whose existence is disputed or unsubstantiated by scientists. It often comes from eyewitness accounts, with folklore and rumor being used to explain, rather than hard evidence leading to hypotheses. One could be forgiven for assuming that there would be no cryptids or mythical creatures in Chimere. After all, there are plenty of enormous and outlandish, yet well-documented creatures in the known world, such as 40-ton titanosaurs and apex predators with meter-long butcher's hooks on their hands. Magic is very real in this realm. Beyond the known world, there are even creatures like griffins and dragons named by naturalists of the assembly. However, chimerans have the same spark of imagination which creates dynamic creatures of our own campfire stories. So there are countless beasts of unfounded legend conjured from nothing, and the same wild imagination that warps a small bear passing in the night into a giant ape man in so many human cultures also creates countless stories that one would be forgiven for taking as reports at face value. The exact distinction between cryptid and mythical creature can be a little bit blurry, but as far as the assembly is concerned, if an animal has consistent reported sightings that do not match verified species, it is classified as a cryptid. Many animals, such as the Hugledoon Kalikathir, Picardian Fabadons, and Morkutlot, were originally classified as cryptid but later verified as real animals. Familiar stories are found throughout Earth's history with the platypus, gorilla, and giant squid being perhaps the most famous examples. There are countless creatures in Chimeran folklore that are not considered cryptids under the assembly definition, though many are taken into account when trying to explain sightings of unknown fauna. Homunculi certainly complicate the situation. The first children created numerous amalgamations, and especially in their earliest Class III homunculi, were genetically in the same as wild animals, just capable of growing anatomical elements consistent with other animals. The so-called worker drones, for example, are genetically closer to Homo altus than Homo altus is to even other Homo erectus descendants, yet they have the anatomical components which clearly resemble such animals as sloths, deer, cockatrices, common drakes, and hyenas. If a miner or logger in the Codrath run hollers of northern Arvel sees a shadowy figure with antlers or hears a cackle that sounds a little too human to be from local hyenas, <laughs> it's a safe bet that this isn't a cryptid, just one of the beast folk. Others, especially later and better known homunculi like harpies, merfolk, and ogres, or the truth behind many cryptids seen especially beyond the known world. As they are not naturally evolved creatures or beings, the Assembly do not consider enchanted animals to be cryptids, even if they aren't well understood. In previous episodes, we have met several cryptids. The Kossin from last month's Firebird episode is listed as a cryptid by the Assembly. While perhaps better classified as a mythical creature, namely an Indrakos the size of an elephant with wings large enough to fly that carved the Great Lakes with its talons, enormous birds in the basin are not only a staple in local reports and recounted stories from the Lowlanders, one was also mentioned by Mary Burke in her survey of the region. 
Some speculate that it might be stories of titan crows, which often nest in the highland lakes, and conflated with such local fauna as Jiao and Indrakos. Though Burke knew of all of these animals, and explicitly mentioned feathery wings in her description, and she is well known for not only keen observation, but several descriptions of animals initially dismissed, like the Highland Fabidons, which later proved to be real. In the folklore of the Argyleth beyond the Celestial Wall, one of the many strange and formidable creatures is the Hesheka. Reports describe it as a hybrid of an ape or monkey and a bear. They are extremely violent creatures, said to despise and therefore maul the faces and hands of people that they find, and they are one of many monsters that raid Kadrath logging and mining camps. Some in the assembly suspect them to be chimpanzees, a species thus far unverified in modern Chimia, but others assume these sightings may be some misidentified homunculi, or even just a story the loggers and miners tell each other around a campfire. The Yahani is a being in the folklore of the Shu. While there may be many kangaroos on the prairie, none have human hands and faces that work metal with expert craftsmanship, yet these are staples of the stories. Though no assembly agents have encountered them, there are many reports with sincerity by the Shu guides, and are generally considered to be cryptids of some sort. Most speculate that they are a homunculus, while some assume that they are a conflation of a as-yet-undescribed species of the short-faced kangaroo Procoptodon, which are known from the forests of both known world continents. There are many humanoid cryptids on Earth, perhaps stemming from misidentifying upright bears or simply seeing human shapes in the shadowy forests when we're afraid. The same is certainly true in Chimere, especially in a setting where everyday people know about reclusive men with fur, claws, and fangs in the remote corners of the known world and beyond, it should come as no surprise that humanoid cryptids with bestial features are a common report. In Kajar, loggers tell of an elusive being called the Taki. This is another word for songbird. The loggers claim if you call it a songbird and whistle while you work, it will not only mimic the calls of finches and chickadees, it will all do all sorts of hard labor for you. The few who have seen it all agree that it stands nearly two span high, or around three meters, and is strong enough to lift a half-ton drum like it was a bread basket. They stick to the shadows, but those helpful beings will do all sorts of useful work as long as no one is looking too close. If you do try to spot it, or dare speak the name its father gave it, the Taki will trash your camp and never be seen again. The Taki is sometimes classified as a mythical being, not a cryptid, although these reporters come with enough frequency, and even recounted by a few assembly surveys, that some do classify them as a cryptid. Illustrations of it bear striking resemblance to Sasquatches, a cryptid in North America. Some have proposed that if Sasquatches are real, then perhaps the Taki is a Bigfoot that got harvested. If this is real, or at least not just a misidentified sloth or bear, most think it far more likely that it is a homunculus that survived the settling of Kajar back during the Age of Witches, rather than a Bigfoot taken back on the Pleistocene, though the Bigfoot hypothesis still has quite a few supporters. It must also be noted that homunculi have been suggested, and even in some cases proven, to be the origin of numerous cryptids and mythical creatures on Earth. A subject of much assembly interest is the first children's settlements on Earth. Most of them seem to date between 10 and 12,000 years ago. It was in these facilities that homunculi, called harvest men, collected beasts and men from Earth and experimented upon them both to make other homunculi, and to refine methods the fish children would employ back home in Chimir. Like the overall collapse of the first children, these settlements have vanished with no shortage of surrounding mystery. However, the harvestmen continue their work for some time after collapse, 
and even, occasionally into modern times, mindlessly creating and releasing strange creations without direction or purpose. Most have been captured by the Assembly, but there are still creations out there, either hiding in the wilds or hidden in plain sight. One of these creations, the Vampires, will be the subject of our episode later this month. Cheers to Glarn for sponsoring this episode. I will admit that cryptids have never really hooked me, and I remain deeply skeptical of most, but in studying for this episode, I have begun to appreciate a lot of their charm, and I can see why there is such an enthusiastic community built around them. Through the rest of October, I have episodes surrounding numerous homunculi that have inspired many cryptids and mythical creatures in both Earth and Chimera. As a quick note, I just wanted to say that my role-playing group is gearing up to play Holler in our next campaign. Rather than Dungeons and the Dragons, this is a setting using Savage Worlds, a rule set which I hope to someday use for a Chimere role-playing game. Holler is a gothic industrial supernatural horror inspired by Appalachia during the early 20th century. In addition to crooked companies, toxic sludge, the walking dead, and meddling fairies, there's also no end to the weird and wonderful cryptids we'll encounter in this setting, and especially after this episode, I'm very excited to dig in. Hope y'all have an excellent day. Cheers, folks!